Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. Morphy, poor Morphy, was a great player. Some people say he was the best of the best. He could play very simple games. He could play very complex games. And in later years, he was far removed from what others. He even went to play odd games, and just to showcase how good he was. Let me introduce one of his games dating back to 1857, when I was just about four years old. And if there are kids watching, that was a joke. The victim was Meek, or Meek. I have no idea how to pronounce his name. Let's call him for now Meek. Morphy White kicked off with his favourite move. And though a response like E5 was very standard at the time, Meek goes for the French. D4. And rather than the D5, this is how Meek answers. Bishop D3. Bishop G7. If you want to cover the pawn, there are one, two, three, four different ways to do this. They could also push the pawn further afield. Morphy covered him by bringing out the bishop. Knight e7, knight e2, noble developmental moves. Let's see this guy to come out. And I don't think anyone needs any explanation for this. Morphy liked symmetrical structures. <laughs> he liked asymmetrical structures and basically didn't care. He loved anything that brings home a win. He answered with this knight response. Bishop in the diagonal and castles and with this pawn push, the battle to control the center had already begun. Do you take here or do you not? If you take, you are opening up the floodgates. The knight would capture, the bishop would come under fire. The bishop on b7 has a dream position and this looks like a walk in the park for black. So Morphy gave Meek no satisfaction. He pushed the pawn and kept the position closed. So what we have is both of the black bishops sitting their respective diagonals doing zilch until the position opens up. Castles and f4 led to this pawn to advance and you can easily destroy the game if you reach a gridlock. Morphy continued with this pawn push. I don't know what it does, and there is no way of trying to find out. Knight d7 was not better either because though you develop your knight, where does he go next? Okay, maybe black is looking to break through with c5, and the knight is hoping to find a new outpost here. And surprise, surprise, Morphy decides to go for a crazy king walk. Seriously, this is what he does. What does this move do? Absolutely nothing. Was this a way to tease his opponent? Maybe. Is it a blunder? For sure it is. But it's not like you are allowing a piece to drop. Maybe he was inviting me to come up with c5. And this is exactly what was played. And if you fail to act, the bishop will drop. Morphy covered. And when the bishop came under fire, what was Morphy up to? He pulled the bishop back. And when this move appeared on the board, are we able to work out what it does? If black goes next for b5, then this may be something. But a6 is completely unnecessary. And as bad as h3 and king h2. And here Morphy begins to wake up. He advanced the knight here and is looking for 
key squares. And Morphe was very good at that. And this is basically the story with these horses. Unlike bishops that can stay in one color only, these knights can jump in any direction and are the only pieces that are able to jump over other ones. And before you go wild on me, there is another piece that is able to jump over another, but this happens only in special cases. That's our game. H6, stopping the knight from making any progress, but to this pawn thrust. And only now you can see why and how the H3 becomes in handy. And with Meek being able to see some danger on the king side, he decides to go for a king move. Rook G1, getting ready to dance, got Meek to reposition his rook. And you can immediately see what is going on. And this is often the problem. Black is trying to defend the position that he has more or less under control because with this position, white has a smoking gun, nothing else. Queen E1 trying to get all the pieces to point toward the king, got the knight to reposition. But again, black is shooting blanks. What is the knight doing here? And why am I scratching my head? If we are not able to understand why the opposition moved where he did, we are not likely to get better at our game. Knight into c6 allows the queen to control all the squares starting from e7 to h4. But since white has two pieces that control h4 and black only one, you can easily land the queen here or even the knight. Morphe repositioned the knight here. But where is he going after this? After queen f8, stopping any funny business. Any ideas how Morphe continued? And this is a good time to use our two seconds countdown. Because you would need them. And if you need a hint, I can offer you this. It has to do with one of the minor pieces. So here we go. In two, one, and pause. Has anyone found this move because this is all you need? It works wonders. After king takes, Morphe took with a double check. The problem with a double check is that you may not be able to remove either piece that is checking you. If you go king h7, you will soon realize when this pawn captures e6, because of the discovered check, the knight on d7 is also going to come flying off. And black is busted. Not that he's not busted. So Meek, he had got the king to f7. But when the pawn took with a check, Meek captured this very naughty pawn and hoped for the best. If you go after the rook, all sorts of magical things begin to happen. Rook to the corner, and God, you can go for anything. One way to get you buried is this rook check. But there are far more efficient ways to do it here. Rather than rook g6 check, there is this check. And once the king is forced back, you can come in with this bishop check. Once the king is squeezed into this very uncomfortable spot, white has e6 and black here can resign and rest in peace. Coming back, Morphe did it even better. He didn't need the bishop to come into h7, but shot off with this pawn check. And when the king backed off, not f6, which is very winning, but this queen check. And when the king moved back to where he stood before the game started, now came f6 and black is completely paralyzed. Bishop back to the corner brings you in with this problem. And simpler than this, you can't get. The queen drops and it's game over. So when f6 came up, 
Mig had to surrender his bishop. And when the bishop was arrested, the rooks came off. And when the knight took, and I wonder why Mig didn't use the queen. Once Morphy landed this check-in, I think Mig was packing in already. King d7 and another check. And Morphy was toying with him. King back to e8. Got h6 to come off too. And once the queen made a run for her life, everything wins. Even this. And this is just to show you. Because this is what Morphy played too. Meek's response here, knight to g8. Trying to shake off the bishop. But Morphy didn't even continue here because Meek also resigned with this knight move. So why did Meek resign? And what did he see coming? What he's in fact doing is staring at mate in one, two, three moves. And there are multiple ways to do this, actually, but we only need one. One way is this bishop check. And when the king is forced here, there is this fallout check. And right after the last defender steps into block, there is your mate, and let's hear it. The other mate is as easy. Bishop g6 check, king f8, queen f4 check, knight f6, and queen takes. And let's keep hearing it because we know it all by now. And this young Morphe made a very zimil out of Meek. And I will come back to cover more games when time permits. I hope there is something to learn here. Until next time, this was your chess puzzler. <laughs>